Hey everyone, uh, this is Kaurav and welcome to 100GB where you get GBs of information. Well, I have been reading this book lately, uh, Software Engineering at Google, written by a lot of uh, senior Googlers. The book in its very first part talks about uh, software engineering and programming. And I myself happen to have used these terms interchangeably in the past. And I realized that, that these are two different terms with different meanings. That is what I am going to talk about in this video today. Okay, so let's quickly take a look at the definitions for both. So software engineering as a whole has three parts, which is the development, the modification and the maintenance. Uh, whereas programming on the other hand is kind of a atomic task in the development uh, aspect. So it's not so atomic, it can be subdivided, but let's treat it to be atomic. So various programming tasks come together to form what we call as development. Uh, now let's quickly uh, take a look at the differences on the basis of various aspects. So first aspect, which is the lifespan of the code. Think of it like cubes are not squares, uh, distance is not velocity, speed is not acceleration. Similarly, software engineering is not programming. So when we are writing code, if we ask ourselves this question that what is the lifespan of this code? The answers will range from, uh, let's say a few hours to a few decades. And actually all of these answers are reasonable. So for code with shorter lifespan, we generally don't care about the libraries, APIs, readability, uh, language version etc but when we expand it to a uh, longer lifespan then the code gets very important then we start optimizing for our peers for the organization and for the future readers of the code uh, by now you you might have guessed where i'm going with all of it uh, towards the code quality and readability and it turns out that i have a series for that i just posted two videos on it if you haven't checked it out just go right away the link is in the description Okay, so basically we want to make sure that our code can react to uh, numerous valuable changes uh, which might be coming in the future because of uh, various reasons, be it technical or business reasons. So changes like new government regulations, new features, resolving bugs, changing databases, new pub sub mechanisms and whatnot. So if your code can't react to these changes, it might be okay for short term projects, but for projects lasting decades, you have to be cautious from day one. Let's come to the next aspect, which is scale. So in software engineering, one needs to be concerned for the scale and efficiency for both the software and the organization it is being produced for. Whereas in programming, one generally focuses on the immediate problem at hand. Well, think about competitive programming. So for even better distinction, uh, consider these questions. How many people are involved? what part they play in uh, development, modification and maintenance. And actually, if we see the entire work we as software engineers do on a daily basis, it will probably tell us that programming is kind of an individual creation, whereas software engineering is this multi-person development of uh, multi-versioned programs. So in software engineering, with scale, there comes complexity. And this complexity can be of various forms, which makes us stumble across questions like, have we become more effective in producing software? Has our dev workflow become more efficient as we grew? Do our version control policies and testing strategies cost us more? And how much does it cost to do the things we do repeatedly on a daily basis? So the third and the last aspect, which is the trade-offs at play. So we can say that uh, software engineering is different from programming in the complexity of decisions that have to be made and their stakes. So in, in programming, the stakes are generally very, or the trade-offs are generally very simple. Uh, let's take an example of a random question in competitive programming. Uh, let's say the maximum value of n can be 100, which means that you are better off with an algorithm of O n cube. Uh, instead of wasting your time uh, and energy on the more efficient solutions. Similarly, for a person project, it, uh, the, the only thing that matters is going live as soon as possible without actually focusing on the quality of the code. But in software engineering, the stakes are generally high, which are actually based on imprecise estimates of time and work uh, because, hey, you cannot estimate the future. So for example, a lot of times we defer the maintenance tasks for the sake of meeting the release deadlines 
with the knowledge that we will have to revisit those decisions because we cannot get away from them they will haunt us in the next release so the job or the aim of the engineering leader is uh, to take into account all the possible trade-offs and then making sure that scaling costs are sustainable and managed properly for the product the organization and the developer workflow okay now i will talk about some personal experience which all of the experienced engineers watching this video can relate to so i started uh, as a novice programmer as everybody does uh, writing some scratch code uh, where the lifespan of the code was hardly few minutes or hours and it was only executed once successfully and never again a freaking programmer so i joined a startup built mobile apps where again the lifespan was pretty small and even these days as well a lot of companies they uh, every year or so they just rewrite their mobile apps with the new technologies and whatnot but some of the scaling challenges are still there i then started working on back-end services where the lifespan was slightly bigger uh, but again, it was bound by the lifespan of the product I'm working on, which is not very certain for startups. So which eventually means that even a 10 years uh, experience startup person might have little or no experience with the maintenance aspect of software engineering. And then finally coming to Google, where every code is envisioned to be there for at least a decade. So this is where the complete software engineering is experienced, which comes with its own side effects, but that is for some other video. And now let's try to conclude this. I have to return some Amazon products, so let's conclude on the way. So conclusion, <laughs> so I think that you might have already figured it out by now, like how do we differentiate between uh, the software engineering and programming. But still, one thing I'd, I'd like to say is, you can think of uh, software engineering like programming integrated over time. Now I assume that you know what integration is, so yeah. And one should also know the difference between saying, uh, it seems to be working, it seems to be maintainable. So these are two statements and there is very deep meaning associated with both of them. So yeah, I would end the video on this note. Okay, so folks, before you actually close this video, I'd like to mention a few things. So for the past couple of videos, I have been noticing that a lot of people have been watching it till the end, but even then uh, only few people comment on the videos. So if you have watched this video this far, I would encourage you to just go to the comment section and write down anything, like anything which is on top of your mind. If you have any suggestion for this video or you have any suggestion for the upcoming videos, just comment it down. And I guess that is all. I will see you in the next one.